we'll now take a look at another set of circuits that we call control circuits. We've already talked about the design of circuits for implementing arithmetic and logical operations. However, there are some other very different types of circuits that are also essential to the proper functioning of a computer system. So we're going to describe one of these important circuit types, which is called the control circuit. Now, they are used not to implement any arithmetic operations, but instead they're used to determine the order in which operations are carried out and to select the correct data values that are going to be processed. So we can think of these as the, uh, the sequencing and decision making circuits that are inside a computer. One type of control circuit is called a multiplexer. So this is a circuit that has two power and input lines and just one output line. So the function of this circuit is to select exactly one of the two power and input lines and copy the binary value of that input line into its single output line. So the idea with this is that we would select the specific input by choosing among a set of additional N lines. And we call these lines selector lines. So the N selector lines can be uh, set to either a zero or a one. And this way we can use the N selector lines to represent all binary values from like zero, 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 zero. So one, 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 however many ones that we have. And these would represent all the integer values from zero to two power n minus one. So the idea with it is that these numbers correspond exactly to the number of input lines. So these sequences of zeros and ones would select one of these input lines. Let's give an example. Let's say we have four input lines numbered zero, one, two, and three. This means that we would need two selector lines. This would correspond to the four binary combinations that can appear on this pair of selector lines. So we would have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And notice that these correspond to the decimal values of 0, 1, 2, and 3 respectively. So what would happen here is the multiplexer would select one input line whose identification number corresponds to the value appearing on the selector lines and copies that value on that input line to the output line. So for example, let's say we pick, uh, we set the input lines to one and zero. So that would mean that the multiplexer circuit would pick input line two. And this is because one zero in binary is two in decimal. So the whole point here is that we set ones and zeros for these selector lines. And based on that combination of, of ones and zeros, we would pick one of the input lines and whatever value corresponds with that input line is what gets sent as our output. So here is just a simple diagram of the multiplexer circuit. Now I'll give you a, an example of the inside part of the circuit in just a second. But what we have here would be the input lines would be this part right here and our selector lines would be over here. So with the selector lines, we would assign ones and zeros for each of those lines. And then based on what goes inside the multiplexer circuit, we would pick one of the input lines and that gets copied as our one output line. So here is an example of a two input multiplexer circuit. So what goes inside the multiplexer uh, circuit. So let's say the value of the selector line is zero. So I'm just going to put that uh, right here. So let's say we make this zero. So then we take a look at the bottom input line and this end gate right here. And we'll see that this is always going to be zero because whatever B is and zero is going to be zero. So this output is always going to be at uh, zero. Now let's take a look at the other AND gate up here. Well, notice that if the selector line is zero, the NOT gate that we have right here is going to make the zero one. And that means that, well, no matter what value A is, A in one is always going to be A. So the output of this top AND gate is going to be equal to the value of A. And this is going to be the value of the input from line zero. So what that means is the two inputs to the OR gate are going to be zero over here. And then it's going to be A up here. And that means that we're going to get well A or zero. 
Well, that's going to give us uh, the value A because by selecting the selector line to be zero, we have in effect selected as our output the value that appears on line zero. Okay, so you might want to try this again if you have your selector line being one and convince yourself that we would get the output line of whatever B is for our uh, result here. The second type of control circuit is called the decoder. And this is the exact opposite of how a multiplexer works. So the idea with the decoder is that we have n input lines and they're gonna be numbered zero, one, two, all the way to n minus one. And we're gonna have two power n uh, output lines and they're gonna be numbered zero, one, two, three, all the way up to two power n minus one. Now each of the input, uh, each of the n input lines of the decoder can be set to either zero or one. And uh, only one of the output lines is actually going to be a one in this case. So what happens here is that when these n input values are interpreted as a single binary number, they can actually represent uh, all of the uh, possible integer values from zero to two power n minus one. So the job of the decoder is to determine the value represented on the n input lines and then send a signal in this case, the signal would be a one on the single output line that has that identification number and all other output lines are gonna be set to zero. So let's give a, an example of this. So let's say we have three uh, input lines and this means that we have uh, eight output lines because it's two power three. So we have uh, eight output uh, lines that are gonna be numbered zero through seven. So these three input lines can actually represent all the binary values from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, which is uh, 0 to 7 in decimal notation. So if, for example, let's say the binary values of the three input lines are 1, 0, 1, well, 1, 0, 1 is 5 in decimal, then a signal, which would be a binary value of 1, would be sent out by the decoder to output line five. So that output line, which corresponds to the number five, would have a one and all of the other, uh, yeah, all of the other seven output lines would be zero. So here we have a diagram that just kind of illustrates the decoder circuit. So here we would have our n input lines. And then over here, we would have our two power n output lines. So once again, the whole point here is that we have a set of ones and zeros being used for the input lines. And that combination is going to correspond to one of the output lines. So that one output line is going to be a one and all of the other output lines are going to be zero. Here we have an example of a two to four decoder circuit with two input lines. So we have those input lines down here, input one and input two. And then we have our four output lines, which would be over here. Uh, so these four output lines are labeled zero, one, two, and three. And the only output line that carries a signal of one is the line whose identification number is equal to the value appearing on the two input lines. So for example, uh, let's say our two inputs are one, one. So let me uh, clear this real quick. So let's say uh, this is one, it's a horrible one. Come on. There we go. And then here is another one. Uh, let's try this again. I don't like that. So one, one. Yeah, we're, we're just, we'll just go with that. So let's follow this circuit and see what happens. So if with input line one, we would see that we would have a one here and we would have a one here. And then if we follow the not uh, gate, we would see we have a zero here. Okay, the zero didn't draw. Let's try again. Zero, one more time, zero. And then we'd have a zero right here. Now, because these two are zeros, it doesn't matter what the other inputs are for the first two AND gates, it's gonna be zero. So we'll just eliminate these two right away. So that's not gonna be one, and that's not gonna be one. Those, These are gonna be zero no matter what. So that's zero, that's gonna be a zero. So we'll just say that they're zero. All right, so let's take a look at the next input. Well, this is gonna be a one, which doesn't really matter because we already said that's gonna be zero. And this is gonna be a one. We'll get to that in just a second. And if we follow the not gate, uh, this is gonna be a zero. So that means this output is also gonna be zero. And notice that with the gate that corresponds to output line three, both of the inputs are one. So that means that our output here is gonna be one. 
and this type of gate is used for several different things. I mean, both the decoder and multiplexer circuits uh, allow us to build computer systems that executes all sorts of types of instructions. So like, for example, we can use a decoder circuit to determine what type of operation we're going to do, whether we're going to add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can use multiplexers to handle things like testing if things are zeros. There are a lot of applications that we can uh, use for using for both multiplexer and decoder circuits.